Welcome to Weaseljaw Digital, and today, again, with all those new players out there, I wanted to release another build video to give you some different builds that fill different roles in this game to help those new players, or even experienced players, really find a way to better build their ships to do the most damage. So, today we're going to be talking about our TIE Fighter. Um, this is the standard Imperial fighter, um, disposable, but effective. In this case, it's really meant to be kind of the um, all-around, uh, all-purpose fighter for the Imperials. And we're going to be going through some builds that really build it out in different ways and really show the versatility of this ship. So the first one we're going to be doing is just a dogfighter build. And this is specifically for dogfighter uh, matches. Um, you don't want to use this in fleet battles because the lower speed is going to hurt you there. You're going to take a lot of damage against those capital ships. It's going to be hard to use it really effectively there. So um, in here for our TIE fighter, our first build, our dogfighter build here, we're going to be going with our standard laser cannons. Now, you can go with the burst cannons. Uh, they do more DPS by a significant amount, but they are harder to aim. They do have far less ammo. So a lot of times if you miss at all with any of your shots, it's going to be harder to take down the enemy ship because you're not going to have enough ammo. So for rookie players, for new players, I would definitely stick with the laser cannons. For more experienced players, the burst cannon's not bad. For really good players, in kind of a sniper build, we can go with the as burst cannon. But that's a high skill weapon. We'll come back to that in a little bit. For our left auxiliary, we're going to go with our emergency repair system. That's going to keep our ship repaired over time. He does a lot of healing. Um, you don't have shields to keep you safe in this thing. So you're going to be taking that hull damage a lot. You're going to need to use this to repair your hull over time. Our right auxiliary, we're going to get going with our standard concussion missile. Good solid damage of 1,000 damage. Quick lock-on of 2 seconds. 6.5 second cooldown before you can shoot another one. And a 6 ammo capacity with a medium homing capability. It's a fairly effective missile to use. You don't want to be using it in tight, confined spaces. Um, or if it looks like they might be able to quickly go behind some kind of obstruction because it's very likely that your concussion missile will just run into that debris. But all around a pretty solid weapon. Our countermeasures, we're going to be going with our Seeker Warheads. In almost all cases, Seeker Warheads are going to trump your other countermeasures. Sensor Jammers have a very limited ammo capacity and a long cooldown. And they only really protect you for 4 seconds. Chaff Particles are really effective, but only if that missile is directly behind you, or you can maneuver yourself to get the missile behind you and launch this at the right time. It's less effective against mines. It's almost not effective against missiles that are coming directly at you um, or short range missiles. So really all around the Seeker Warheads are a better choice. For hull, we're gonna go with our Agile hull. This adds acceleration maneuverability while reducing our health a little bit. And we're gonna go with our micro thrust engines. This increases our maneuverability while lowering our acceleration max speed. So if we look at the overall stats, we lower our health down to 1240. That's a pretty big hit on this. And it is the reason that if you want to swap out that agile hull for a dampener hull, I wouldn't hold it against you. That's going to increase your health back up a little bit, make your survivability a little bit higher. But we're going for a specific build here that I want to talk about, and that takes the Agile Hull. So our max hull is at 1240. Max speed is at 105. Max acceleration reduced to 179. Our maneuverability is at the top of the chart there at a 116, though. And what I want to illustrate with this one is, if we go over here and look at this, this is my TIE Interceptor that you'll see me fly a lot in dogfight matches. And it is built to be a dogfighter. If you look at the stats for speed, 119, this TIE Fighter is 105, a little bit slower. Max acceleration here, 179, 179. Maneuverability here, 110, 
116 here. So this TIE Fighter is a little bit slower, just by a hair, same acceleration almost exactly, and it's more maneuverable. So it's actually really great in a dogfighting situation. It's Max Hall 1240 is 540 some more than the hull of the TIE Interceptor, while maintaining the same speed, acceleration, and maneuverability stats. So the trade-off between these two is this has more hull, more survivability, while this ship can do more damage. So if you're really looking to dogfight um, and you're a rookie player, this is not necessarily a bad idea. Again, if you're a brand new player, I'd stick with those laser cannons. It's more dependable. It's a standard kind of shot that goes out at a strong pace. It's easy to lead targets and really aim it out. The burst cannon is easier to miss shots with, has a much lower uh, capacity of shots, so you're going to run out of ammo. If you're a high-skilled player, um, this Plasburst Burst Cannon is amazing in this build. You're going to be able to keep your targets lined up. You're going to be able to outmaneuver them. And you're going to be able to hit them with these Plasburst Burst Laser Cannons. If you can time those shots, you're going to be really deadly, especially against A-Wings, but even against other, shot, uh, other ships. The one, well, the two problems with this... Um, Limited range of 600 meters instead of the 1,000 meters of either the burst cannon or laser cannon. Um, and the laser cannon is a lot easier to hit at longer ranges. And the secondary problem is while you're charging this plasma burst cannon, you do take increased damage. So you have to be really careful. If you're taking shots, it can actually hurt you to charge this, and you're going to have to fire it without charging, which heavily reduces the damage. Um, so that's why, you know, I don't typically use it. My aim isn't quite good enough that I can depend on the plasma burst. I wish it was though, because that's a fun weapon to use. And it, in the right hands, it can be very effective. It can just knock people out super quick before they even have a chance to react. So that's our dogfighter build. Next, we're going to go to our component sniper. This build is specifically designed to go after the components of the MC-75. Your first target is going to be the shield generators. Second target is going to be their targeting system. Last target is going to be their power systems. Um, the power systems are on the big fin underneath the ship. The targeting is on the smaller fin on top of the ship. Shield generators are off to the side. Now this ship is going to be going with our burst cannon. We're not going to be worried about hitting fast moving targets. We're hitting just the capital ship. We're not worried about our aim. I don't want to go with the plasma burst here because I don't want to be taking damage while I'm charging this and you're going to be taking damage. We're going to be going with our proton torpedo. This does 4,000 damage. It has a pretty long lock on time of two seconds, but it has a long lock on range. Lock is required for this weapon, and you cannot fire under the minimum range of 500 meters. Cooldown's 10 seconds. You do have two shots. It is weak homing, though. You don't want to use it against fighters. For our right auxiliary, we're going to be going with our prototype piercing torpedo. Half the damage at 2,000. A little bit faster lock on time. Same range and minimum range. Faster cooldown. One more missile for your ammo capacity. Also weak homing. Again, not going to want to fire at enemy fighters. What you want to do is make a wide angle approach with this against the MC-75, coming in at the side and targeting those shield generators. Target those shield generators. When you get to 1500, you start that lock on. You hold that lock and fire when you get just below 600 meters. Once you get to 1,000 meters, you start firing with your primary weapon while you're watching that range. When you hit 600, fire those missiles. Then you're going to want to angle yourself away from the ship, either over or under, and you're going to want to hit your boost. You're going to be spending most of your time in this ship with power to engines. You're going to want to fly past the ship or away from it, depending on the angle you're taking. Get to about 1,500 meters away from the ship, 
then start making your arc back to the ship to take another attack run on the shield generators. If their shields are up, you're going to do 4,000 damage to the shields and 2,000 damage to the component, which is effective, plus any damage you get from your blasters. If the shields are down, you're going to be doing 4,000 damage with this missile and another 2,000 with this, plus the damage you get from your blasters. So if the shields are down, you do a lot of damage. But you can even hit those shield generators when the shields are up due to these piercing torpedoes. For countermeasures, we are going to be using Seeker Warheads. When you're making those attack runs on the capital ship, on the MC-75, you do tend to get shot at with missiles from that capital ship. So having those Seeker missiles be able to take out missiles from in front of you is very helpful. For our hull, we're going with Reinforced Hull. We are making several attack runs, hopefully, and we don't have any repair systems. So we need a lot of hull to keep us alive. This gives us a 60% boost to our health. And we're going with thrust engines for maximum speed. So if we look at our stats, we do have almost 2,500 health, which is considerable. Our max speed is 195, which is going to make it hard for anyone to keep up with us or for the capital ship to target us much. Our max acceleration is pretty slow at 74. And our maneuverability is horribly slow at 36. So when you do make that turnaround for your second attack run, you're going to make making a very long long, slow, wide arc because of that lowered maneuverability. Most of your time, you're going to be putting that power to engines, though. Um, so, you know, lower your speed to half. Once you get to 1,500 meters, make your spin, then increase your speed again, get ready to use that boost again. The ship is pretty effective at taking out components on the enemy ship while staying alive for multiple runs back and forth. Oops. Next up, we're going to be talking about our Disabler. This is a TIE Fighter built for dogfights, but it can be used effectively in the dogfighting portion of fleet battles. It can also be used for defending capital ships, your, your uh, light cruisers and your Star Destroyer, um, pretty effectively. So, let's take a look at this build. Um, for this one, I would suggest the Burst Cannon. It's a good way to practice the Burst Cannon. The reason is you're going to be using the Ion Missiles to disable enemy ships a lot, so the targets aren't going to be that maneuverable, so you can get the extra damage from the Burst Cannon. If you're really worried about it, you can go with the Laser Cannon. Um, the Plaz Burst is an option, but the targets are usually going to be either not moving or you're going to be waiting for that reload, so that Plaz burst is a little iffy. I like the burst cannon for this build. We're going to be going with our repair system and the ion missile. Now the ion missile does 6,000 ion damage, has a one second lock on, which is quick. Lock on range of 1,500 meters, which is really impressive. You can get that lock early and fire it at the right time. Um, it's best to fire these in close if possible. However, if they're running away from you, you can fire at a longer range. Cooldown is 20 seconds. That's a little long but you do have six shots with it, and it has a medium homing capability. Now what happens is when you hit a uh, Rebel ship, or New Republic ship, whatever they want to call themselves, um, with this missile you're going to do 6,000 ion damage. You're going to disable their shields, and you're going to disable their ship, and they're going to be flying dead, which means they're just going to coast along at the same speed and trajectory that they were traveling when you hit them with the missile. This allows you to then target them very accurately with your primary weapon. So you can take the time, shoot them, take them out before they reactivate their ship. Once you do that one time with that ion missile, you're then going to be waiting for that 20 second cooldown where you're going to be just doing normal dog fighting with your burst cannons. Countermeasures is Seeker Warhead. We're going to go with our Dampner Hull. Dampner Hull makes it harder for the enemy to lock missiles onto you, meaning you'll have to deal with those less. And we're going to go with our standard twin ion engine. We're not doing heavy dogfighting here. The disabled targets won't be hard to hit, so we don't need high maneuverability. And then we're doing standard dogfighting after we use up those ion missiles or while we're waiting for the cooldown. Uh, so it's kind of an all-around kind of build here. Uh, max hull is reduced a little bit, down to about 1,400. Other stats all stay stock. 
Um, so it's a little bit better in fleet battles. Um, you're going to take less damage from capital ships. You can fire those ion missiles at capital ships to reduce their shields, but they're great for taking out disabling enemy fighters too. Next up for fleet battles exclusively is our shield breaker build. This build is pretty low um, ability. Uh, you don't have to be a very skilled pilot to be able to use this effectively. Um, the, the disabler is a good one for low skilled new pilots also. Um, I should go back to that specifically for that reason. This is actually a really good build for low skilled pilots, for new pilots. Um, if that ion missile lands, you're going to be able to target that ship, do damage, hopefully knock them out. Um, new players have a really hard time contributing in battle. Um, they don't have the skill and ability to target. They get shot down real quick. Hitting someone with the ion missile means that guy is not a threat for a little bit, and they're an easy target. So this is a great build for new players. This build also good for new players. This is a shield breaker. So you're going to be using this in fleet battles to take out the, sh the shields of the, um, the frigates and the MC-75. Our primary weapon is ion cannons. Ion cannons do a lot of ion damage. 1680 damage per second maximum ion damage. Very little hull damage. So if their shields are down, you're not going to do a lot of damage to their hulls. That's why this isn't the best weapon for dogfighting. But it's really great at taking out shields. Left auxiliary, we're going to use our ion missile. Now our ion missile does 6,000 ion damage, medium homing. We've already talked about this missile. Our big hitter is our right auxiliary, though, which is the Ion Torpedo, which does 24,000 ion damage. Has an area of effect of 125 meters, so if anyone's nearby, they're also going to lose their shields, any enemy ships. Lock-on time is 3 seconds. Lock-on range is 1,500 meters, with a minimum range of 500 meters. Cooldown is 25 seconds, which is very long, but you only have one ammo capacity here anyways. Lock is required, can't fire in a minimum range is ion only and weak homing. So the goal here is just before your team wins the morality battle, if you are close to your capital ship and you can switch out your ships, or if you're dead and you're gonna be spawning a new ship and it looks like you're about to switch to offense, going with this build is really effective. Early on when you're going against those frigates, um, popping into this ship will help you take down those frigate shields really, really super fast. You will just strip those shields between your blasters and your two different ion missiles. Um, once you get the shields down on one, take your time to adjust to the other one and strip its shields as much as you can. It's also great for stripping a big portion of the shields from the Star Destroyer, leaving less shields for the rest of your team to go after. Now, a slight variant you can do here is the ion rockets instead of the ion missile. Ion rockets do 300 ion damage. You do have 30 of them. They fire pretty quickly. When you're going against the MC-75, chances are you're not going to survive for a whole lot of runs with this ship, nor are you going to be able to go back and refill on ammunition. So I find it's better to go with the ion rockets, and then that way when you're making your approach, you can unload with all of those ion rockets, your big ion torpedo, your ion weaponry, and do as much damage to those shields as possible before you get taken out. Taking the shields off those capital ships allows you to do direct damage to the hulls or to their components. Very, very effective strategy. Countermeasures is Seeker Warheads. We're going to go with the dampener hull on this to reduce any chance of missile locks on us. And we're going to go with our thrust engine for speed. So our hull is reduced a little bit to 1400. Our acceleration is reduced a little bit. Our maneuverability is reduced a little bit. Higher than the component sniper, um, max speed is nice and high also. So this one's going to strip those shields and then get out of play as fast as possible. Last up, we're going with something that I like to call the rock. This TIE fighter is built with a lot of durability 
and it will really surprise enemy players, especially A-Wing players. So this ship, if you're a rookie player, again, standard laser cannon, you can go with the burst cannon. Um, this is a good build for rookie to moderate players. Our left auxiliary is going to be our repair system to keep us alive. Right auxiliary is going to be our concussion missiles to do what we can with missile damage. Countermeasures, again, are Seeker Warheads. They're just a far superior countermeasure system. For hull, we're going to go with our reinforced hull, which is going to add 60% to our health. And for our engines, we're going to go with our microthrust engines. So what this does is it increases our max hull to almost 2,500 which is very impressive. Our max speed is reduced to 105. Our acceleration is reduced to 74. Our maneuverability is tweaked upwards just a little bit to 84. What this means is you're decent at dogfighting maneuverability. You're not gonna be super fast or accelerate quickly, but those aren't a big deal in, in dogfighting. Um, that high maneuverability helps you out there. The big deal here though is our max hull at 2,500. Big problem for new players is survivability. This increases your health by almost a thousand points, which gives you a lot more survivability. It makes your repair function even more valuable to you as you have a lot more hull that you're gonna be able to repair over time. Hopefully you stay alive long to use it two or more times. Um, and this way, if you get engaged by an enemy, you might be able to escape or react to them in some way before they can just blow you out of the water. You may be able to stay alive, along, alive long enough for one of your allies to help you off or scare off that person that's attacking you. That max hull of almost 2,500 gives you a lot of survivability, especially against A-wings. A-wings can rip apart a normal TIE fighter very quickly. So against a TIE fighter that only has 14 or 1,500 health, an A-Wing can flip through that real quick with his burst cannons. 2,500 health? Nope. That A-Wing is really going to struggle to take you down quickly, which means it's going to give you time to react to that situation. That A-Wing is going to have to stay on your tail for a very long time, waiting for his weapons to build power back up just to be able to shoot you at all. So it gives you a lot of time to survive and react. So good beginner build, as is the disabler build. Good beginner build. Your dogfighter is a little bit more of a moderate build. Component sniper and shield breaker are both fairly good builds for beginner to moderate players also. So a lot of good different options there for the TIE fighter to make the most use out of the TIE fighter. Um, and, and see what it can really do, give you a couple different builds to work on. As always, tweak as needed. If you prefer a different cannon, use that different cannon. If you prefer a different missile, use that other missile. But these give you good builds to start from that you can adjust as you see fit. So hopefully you feel a little more comfortable with the TIE Fighter. Uh, feel free to check out my other guides. I have a component guide where I go through every component of the ships. Um, and also some general flight tips for the different ships also in another se section of guides. So um, check those out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.